Hello everyone, welcome back to a new video. Today we're making a button in InDesign. This can be very useful whenever you want the user of your PDF to send them back to uh, your website or even just your social media channels. And you want to do that not using a regular hyperlink, but a gorgeous luscious button. So in this video, first we're going to have a look at the functionality of the button and later we'll look at the design. We're going to make it look good. So by the end of this video, you will know how to turn this into this. I'm Boris from BarbaDarling.com and I make videos to help you take your design work to the next level to it. So if that's something you're interested in, hit subscribe and the bell to be notified whenever I post new videos every week. Now, without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so let's start with the worksheet right here. You can get this at BobaDarling.com, but um, I'm sure you have a document ready to practice on. I called this one my awesome download and then here we have some intro text and all the way down here we have the call to action click here to sign up. Now there's one thing I just want to put out there when it comes to creating a call to action. People in general know already that they're going to have to click on it for something to happen because it's a hyperlink or a button. So rather than saying um, click here to sign up or click here to download, just write down download or sign up without the whole clicking part. So now that I have that out of the way, let's get started with the button making. Um, to get started, we're just gonna draw a text box, uh, a text field right here. Size doesn't really matter at this point. Um, just a simple text box and let's give it a little bit of color to see what we're working with. Right now, let's type in our call to action, sign up and adjust the font size a little bit and let's make it white so it looks a little better on this button. Now we want the text to align in the center of the button. First of course we're gonna just align the text horizontally in the center by paragraph and then align center and then we also want to have it in the middle vertically. Now you may be tempted to just give it a line break and call it a day but it's quite complicated to get, get it exactly in the middle. There is a much easier way by just hitting Command B or Control B for Windows users. And then we have the text box settings. And down here you can say the vertical alignment and set that to center, like so. And there we have it. Now we have a, something that kind of looks like a button already. Now to make this actually work, you're going to need the buttons and forms a window. To open it up, uh, you go up here to a window and then choose interactive and then here buttons and forms. This will open up this little window right here with all kinds of fun functionalities. Now to get started, we select the button option up here and this activates all the other fields as well. Now next here we have the name of the button. Now if you're using only one button in your document, the name doesn't really matter. However, when you're making more complex forms or documents with multiple buttons, it can be very useful to have your buttons named. And you really don't want to be doing that in the end. It's really useful to have this in your system, just to get used to naming the buttons. So I'm just going to name this sign up BTN, BTN meaning button, of course. There, perfect. Moving on to the event. Um, the event tells the button when it needs to do something. So by default, it's selected the release or tap, which is fine for now. There is another option, click right here. This will work in this case. However, the functionality is just a little bit different. So we're just gonna leave it on release or tap. Then moving down, the action is what the button will do when it is released or tapped. So here you can, you can actually select multiple options, multiple actions after each other. But right now, all we need is uh, this go to URL right here. By selecting that, this little field here pops up where you actually type the URL where you want to go. Uh, for me, I'm just gonna type bubblodarling.com. Now, if you want to monitor how many clicks your button gets, you could add some Google Analytics here or maybe a bit.ly link that will also count how many uh, clicks it actually got. Now, moving down, there's a little appearance section. We're not gonna play with that yet. We're gonna have a look later. Um, 
then we have a checkbox saying hidden until triggered. Do not check that. <laughs> this will make your button disappear. So just make sure you don't check that box. Moving down to printable. Now, do we want to uh, print our button or not? In my opinion, it looks a lot nicer when there are no buttons showing up on the PDF when, when the user decides to print it. So I deselect this box right here. Now this should work already and we're gonna give it a little test run. There is the EPUB uh, preview right here. This shows a little preview of the document and the buttons on there, they work. Ta-da! Here we have the website showing. Perfect. Now there's one more thing that is quite important when it comes to interactive PDFs. And that has everything to do with the exporting of the file. Because when you export it by hitting Command E or go to File, Export, by default, it selected the PDF print. Now the button in a print PDF, they won't work because you need to select the interactive PDF right here. Now you can keep all this by the defaults and voila, here it is, your interactive PDF. But we are not done yet because right now all we have is just a big pink clickable box. So let's dive into the design part of the button. To make it look more like a button, now I'm gonna start by giving it a little bit of a rounded corner. Now, even if you're not using any rounded corners in, your, in the rest of your design, I do recommend using a little, little, tiny, tiny, tiny rounded corner on your buttons, just to indicate it is clickable and that it's actually a button. So just maybe even just a three pixel radi radius can make a big difference and really makes your button communicate it is a button and not just a text field. So to do this, we're going here to objects and then select corner options. Yeah, you can play around a little bit with this, but um, I'm just gonna leave it at that. And the next thing I'm going to do is give it a little bit of a drop shadow so it comes off the page a little bit. Usually I'm not a big fan of drop shadows anymore, but for buttons, I like to make the exception. Um, so to do this, I'm going here to object effects. Now by default, this has this big ass black harsh shadow that is just ugly. So for buttons, I do think it looks best when the shadow is straight underneath. So I'm gonna change this to 90 degrees and then tone it down a little bit. So um, turn the opacity to 40% maximum. Now by default, it is a black shadow. This is not wrong per se. However, I do think it looks a little more modern and um, makes the button appear somewhat transparent when you make the shadow similar color to the button itself. So I'm gonna choose the similar pink right here and then turn down the brightness a little bit, make it a little bit darker. Um, so, uh, there. And now let's play around a little bit with the distance and the size until we're happy with it. And you're done. And there you have it. That's how you turn a regular hyperlink into a gorgeous button. Now, if you wanna follow this tutorial step by step, um, it is all on bobodarling.com and I'll put a link in the description. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, let me know by giving it a thumbs up or let me know in the comments down below. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.